Aid from whichbike.com here. Well, being a mad sports car enthusiast and a motorcyclist as well, um, this is a comparison test I've been wanting to do for a good couple of years. Now, I've been out of motorcycling, as you probably are aware, for a couple of years now, um, but I've been running around in all sorts of sports cars. Um, this is the current stable. Now, you might say it's a bit of a strange comparison, but hey, everything can be compared. Everything has a feeling, everything gives an experience or an emotion. Uh, for me, and I imagine all of you that are watching this, you've got a passion for wheels, technology, speed. And so, really, this makes a lot of sense. Where do you spend your money? Uh, and of course, I'll be using the usual parameters uh, to gauge which one I think is the overall winner. Obviously, the bike has an advantage in a lot of areas. Uh, the Bentley and many others, and the RS3, middle ground, dark horse, could be. So we've got to, I'll put the uh, stats up for the cars and bike on the screen, so you can see their relative strengths and weaknesses before we get to that kind of test driving. Uh, there's the Bentley, two Volkswagen VR6 engines. It's uh, W12, therefore, 552 brake horsepower, does 195, uh, with the roof up, I should mention. 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Uh, over the lifetime ownership they've had it so far, averaged about 11 and a half miles to the gallon. <laughs> it's horrific. It really, really is horrific. But my God, what a beautiful car. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Here's the Honda CBR Fireblade, the standard version, running at about 16 grand. 800 quid for the extra uplift to downshift to auto blipper system that you get, or pay 19 odd grand and you get the uh, Fireblade SP, which has lighter wheels, uh, no pillion seat, a few extra bits, and the auto blipper, uh, titanium tank. Uh, just generally a little bit more track orientated. Obviously it's got, an, it's got adjustable O-Lins. Uh, this one hasn't. Damn fine bike though. And then we have the Audi RS3. Um, probably the, in the real world, the, the fastest Audi RS of all, because it's smaller, it's filter, it's actually nippier than an RS6 until you get on like motorways and things. Other than that, it's an epic car. I'll have a good look around that a bit later. So, uh, right, let's talk, let's take them all out and let's see how each one feels, what it delivers in terms of feeling experience. And then we'll be able to make a decision really, in order, which is the best vehicle for the road overall i'm not talking about taking four people down to france we're just talking about the overall experience obviously the bike's going to fall short in practicality against the other two and i will weigh it up like for like as if they're all just they're just different same vehicle practically or same vehicle class and we're going to go from there sometimes the car's going to lose out sometimes the bike but overall it should work itself out and actually i'm really keen to find out the results myself so uh uh, let's get out on the road. Mm, eeny meeny, miny mo. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so let's take the uh, fire blade out. Let's look at the wishy washy boogie TFT. That wasn't on there a couple of years ago when I last took one out, first and only time. Got three rider modes user one, two, and three, and configurable. Uh, user one being the, uh, the full power, full Scooby Doo Monty Beans, uh, which it is currently in. I uh, don't know why I do that. Sign of madness. Let's start it up. Oh, oh yes. Well, first impressions. Um, bearing in mind, I haven't been in many soup bikes this season. I've forgotten what I like. Is that it's actually pretty damn comfy. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Don't know where that came from. Oh, a bit of weight, a bit. Uh, handlebars aren't too low, obviously they're kind of clip-ons, so racing style, but not silly low. But uh, on my ride down here I was getting aching back the wrist pretty quickly. Uh, the clutch is not configurable, clutch lever, adjustable even, and it has caused me some issues. It's quite far out, but shit, I mean it's not a deal breaker. But what a smooth bike, and the seat's really comfy. Now, when you're really going at speed, you can duck really low, push your ass right back, get below the cow. And it's very nice indeed. 
Now the last time it was on the uh, Fire Blade, it was in fact the first time it went out on the Superbike. And uh, damn, what an experience that was. Oh dear, oh dear, I really, I mean, I almost literally capped myself. I had a bit of a moment, one of the biggest moments I've had on a motorcycle actually. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I mean, I'm a rubbish rider now, but back then, that was two years, or well, 18 months at the start of my riding 18 month career. I didn't have a real scooby doo what I was doing. This bike's got such lovely kind of linear power. Cool, that's a bit of a bump. Oh, I <laughs> forget how fast these bikes are, it's mad! Give it a we'll just keep the last open up there. Wow. Whew. Hot damn. The power this thing puts out and the way it delivers it in such a beautiful linear fashion. Really connected to the throttle in a, a fantastic way. It's a remarkable bike. I can see why it's still a, sorry, a purist dream. And also other people just really like it as well. It's a, it's phenomenal, really. Now, considering it hasn't got the technology that might save your life, as you might find in a BMW S1000 RR, etc., then uh, that has its advantages and disadvantages. You certainly feel connected with this bike. I mean, day in, day out ride, I might like the uh, mitigation stuff that could save your ass on the BMW. And th this bike is just it's, it's so nimble. Also, I drove the uh, Speed Triple RS, and that just felt a lot heavier. Of course, it's not a racing bike, but still, this feels light. Well, without long getting used to it, but uh, bloody marvellous. Sneaky in here. Got away with it. I love this bike so far. I, mean, I don't know what's changed since the 2015 model I took out back in the day. It feels pretty raw, pretty similar to uh, how I remember it feeling. Obviously the TFD screens have changed and that's a real boom. Although it's placed so low and your head so far forward. I mean you can't see it, you should look down. If you're looking down, you're not looking in front of you, therefore it's <laughs> inevitably dangerous. Bit of a tickle, isn't it? Bit of a tickle. I'm going to ask you about um, can options and full systems. And they say, well, most people don't bother. And I now know why. This bike sounds flipping epic. It really does. It's got the most amazing sound. The engine, you can hear more so than the exhaust. It's got a marvellous, marvellous sound. So you can really get used to it. It's quite addictive. It does no silly pops and crackles. Well, I would like them. You know that. Well, these bikes still so popular they are the man although every Tom Dick now these days seems to get the S1000 oh or the Kawasaki oh superb so a really difficult different experience to drive in a car of course there's nothing like the inertia you get on a motorcycle now that is true for both acceleration turning and braking or retardation as they call it in the States they're really not comparable dynamically. Now this is supposed to be 0 to 60 in 2.6 or 2.7 seconds. This is bloody fast. I mean, I'd never be able to get under three. I'm not good enough to be able to control that power, nor am I brave enough. I'll be just hanging on for dear life and still manage only three and a half. Now the Audi comes in at around about, about 3.6, 3.7 seconds. Uh, the RS3, 
best it's supposed to do 4.1 or 4.2 with about 365 horses but I can tell you from my experience with the car and talking on the forums every other owner and having them on the rolling road that the Audi does really push out high 390s before you even start modifying it so yeah talking about dynamics the car can't really get close even the fastest of cars even the Lamborghinis and the McLarens the, you know, top of the range once. They don't quite match it. Um, only a Formula One car could probably match a motorbike because that's got the same amazing braking which always freaks people out. More so than the acceleration and the way it can turn a corner. Okay, so here we are, roof down in the Bentley. About watching out for potholes as usual. Now, some bikes are comfortable, some bikes aren't. Well, I can tell you with any <laughs> absolute 100% certainty, this is a comfortable car. <laughs> uh, the leather seats are awesome. This car's several years old now, and it still smells incredible inside. To be fair, 16 volts died to provide the skin for it. So, vegetarians, vegans, look away now. But, my God, it's worth it. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. There's probably not many better interiors of any car in the world, except perhaps, to my liking, uh, the Pagani Zonda, and the other one, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> something? Hiru, <laughs> or something? Here I am, I don't know. Uh, which I've seen inside of, and that does look a bit epic as well with the open gated gearbox and stuff you can see the mechanicals moving pretty bloody cool chrome everywhere and never and alcantara but as it's just generally a place to sit certainly traditionally wise this is very very nice indeed you can potter about in normal drive and smooth as you like and it still uh, has a good turn of speed if you put your foot down we can put it to sport it sounds even better looks up decibels by about 20 percent and just like that you see on a motorbike in the higher modes then the steering gets a bit tighter the suspension gets a bit firmer and the inputs with the accelerator are more direct and quicker I just love pointing around this car it's one of the few cars that I don't speed in one of the few vehicles that I've never speed in actually okay apart from a couple of times when I was trying to see what the top end was like and then bottled it <laughs> It's magnificent. It's also got the most amazing sound system. I'm not sure if I can play it. But. I mean that, no word of a lie, is half the decibels it can put out. Quite incredible. I mean apparently it's called a name system, N-A-I-M. It's a bespoke British hi-fi outfit and it's £7,000 in itself. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? You can get uh, an MT-07 fully specced up with that. If you can get an MT-09 for roughly not much more. So. Madness, isn't it? Absolute madness. Anyway, it came with a car. I said uh, it was bought second hand. Uh, several years old. It's a lot of car for the money as you get lower down the rankings. And the cars go from about, in the convertibles, go from about 40 up to brand new. We're specced up, it could be heading towards 200. I've certainly seen cars up there, the latest ones. It's stupid money, really. I mean, you're going to lose a huge amount of depreciation. So, affordability is not going to be a strong point for this one in the ratings. Comfort will be uh, absolutely paramount. And kudos, well, more people turn around and talk to me when I'm in this than on a motorbike or in the Audi. So, the kudos score is going to be off the charts. It's just an epically cool car to drive. No one judges you, which you might get in uh, hypercars, for example. Ah, all in all, just a lovely place. I'll uh, take you further around the outside and inside of the car for those that are interested. If not, fast forward a little bit. Up to you. This is a tiny out in the Bentley for now. Well, here is the roof down. Oh. What a beautiful car, flipping unbelievable. I'm 
through the boot. Loads of space. Inside. And for turn the back. Here we come in here. I mean the walnut is beautiful. And it's actually real wood. <laughs> Would you believe it? It's got a brightling clock in the middle. Apparently that's worth a little bit by itself. It's just an incredible place to sit. As I said, along with the stereo. Roof down, nice sun, blaring away. You're in a very happy place and all your troubles seem far, far away. Oh, damn. Anyway, if you've got any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so this is the RS3. Yeah. I mean, the retail, the latest one retails for, uh, you're talking well over £50,000 once you've specced it up. This one's got the sports exhaust, uh, dynamic pack. <sighs> all sorts of didgeridoos. It's got the light leather which is quite rare, quite sought after. Lightens the cabin up quite nicely. It's a beautifully made car, I mean really well made car. It's probably better made than the Bentley actually. Ironically. Certainly more reliable. That's the back. Easy easy two massive adults or three medium sized adults. Here's the boot. Zzz. <laughs> Just in case you want to see it. I mean, I can get my bike in the back, no problem or whatsoever, so that is fine. When I say bike, I do mean my cycling bike, not my motorbike. Aha. What I've got on right now. Okay, um, let's start the subsidy. faster in this than I could a motorbike and that's mainly due because I'm crap on a motorbike I'm a half reasonable uh, fast driver I've done uh, rallying and such stuff like that it's a very nice place to be the seats are epic we've got lumbar support very comfortable they're uh, premium performance seats I'm not sure how much they cost above standard all in all, the car is very well built, it never rattles, it's just a solid bit of granite, typical of those Teutonic Germans. They do know how to build cars, this is for sure. Probably hear some pops and crackles like that. This is the sports exhaust optional extra. Of course, I'm a bit of a hooligan, so... Uh, <laughs> So not as comfortable as a Bentley, not uh, as flowy, the Bentley glides over the road surface. This has got rock solid suspension, uh, but at least you know what the car's doing. Arch enemies, the AMG A45. Would you believe it? But hey, right, who's in the mood for a race? <laughs> on a serious note, I did race on a dual carriageway uh, against a 458 Italia and a Skyline GTR, and this kept up, which is quite incredible. So, on one hand, it looks bloody good value at 50 grand odd. But on the other hand, it's a bloody hatchback. How can a hatchback be worth more than 20, 25 grand? 
it's quite it is quite ridiculous isn't it I mean you've got to laugh uh, of course it hasn't got that outright acceleration and uh, retardation that a motorbike's got nothing's going to give you that sort of thrill but uh, hatchbacks all in all are more fun than hypercars I wonder if it's as much fun driving this, uh, as driving a Ferrari as driving this for example or McLaren they're just kind of swift um, but you're so worried about the expense of the car I suppose you just don't give it as much beans as you would a hatchback I mean, we've grown up as young men to love hatchbacks and rake the nuts off them and uh, even though I'm more mature it's kind of transcended into this it's the ultimate boy racer mobile I reckon Ultimately practical. I mean, as you saw, it's uh, seats five, and it even put stuff in the back. You put large stuff in the back, bikes, furniture, your mother-in-law, whatever. Right. One more thing I want to show you before we part company. Oh, it's an S3, and that's the launch control. <laughs> I've done it a few times. I mean, it is brutal. Um, it's probable that I could launch this 060 fast I could launch any motorbike unless there's a, there's a hyper scooter out there which is obviously click on click off a bit like an electric car just goes woof. but uh, other than that I reckon this could be any motorbike in the hands of a novice like myself do you just plant the bloody things like skilly mode a motorbike it's more about skill and uh, rolling, rolling's all right but standing start motorbike oh I couldn't pull it off I've never really tried it to be honest I just got this fear that the wheelie's going to go up going to go arse over tip face over arse whichever way it is and uh, instead of that bike and a heap of an embarrassment okay clear bit of road right let's try this launch control I can't remember how to do it chat control off Sport mode, dynamic mode, foot on the brake, foot on the accelerator. Well, I think you get the gist of it. <laughs> right, that's enough of that. I think we'll call it quits there. So, that was the uh, Audi RS3. In many ways, a lot more fun than the Superbike. I suspect this would be quite high scoring actually. So, uh, adieu again. Look out for the final scores. Lay down. Okay, so there we have it. The Audi RS3 scores up on the screen now. Slightly pips it from the fire blade, mostly with the practicality. Um, so, well, a bit of a shock. All motorcyclists out there, don't shoot me. This was just a straightforward comparison. Here's the final scores side by side. The real conclusion here is they're all brilliant and everybody needs all three in their life. You need a car for practicality, you need a car for comfort, and you need a motorbike for thrill. Um, you could get away with two vehicles, the motorbike, and a car that does everything. Leave it in your hands. Feel free to add some comments below whether you agree or disagree. Ciao for now.